On this episode of Strength Coach Tutorials, we are going to update the chart from Strength Coach Tutorials number 55 to display multiple training types for this training load dashboard. So what you are going to be able to do is have an athlete that you want to select be able to look at their training history as well as select how many days you would like their rolling average to take place over and it will automatically update their graph to show their team rolling average, acute to chronic workload ratio, a high and a low value, and then a stacked bar chart for the practice and the strength conditioning training load. So let's get after it. Okay, we're back and we are starting off with the sheet as if we ended off in Strength Coach Tutorials number 55 on training load calculations. And if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to leave a link down in the description below as well as up in the top right corner and you can click on that link and follow along and get to where we got to right now. As a reminder of how far we got, we have the ability to select our athlete, either athlete one or two, as well as select the number of days that we want our rolling training load average to be calculated over. On our graph, we have a couple of lines here. We have the 1.3 value, which is commonly um, a value that is used for the high end of an acute chronic workload ratio, and then the 0.8 value, which is commonly used as the low end. And that is mostly coming from uh, Tim Gabbett's work. So if you haven't checked out some of that, you might want to do that. In order to get this down over on the left hand side here, we have a data table and that has our athlete, the session type, the RPE time, training load, etc. So I received a question on how can I add multiple training loads to the same graph and still graph it and make it look nice. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is actually change how we're inputting our data a little bit. So right now we have one line and then one session type and then um, one training load value. What I wanna do is actually change this so that on each day we might have a strength conditioning training load and we might have a practice training load. So what I'm gonna do is add a couple of columns to this table so I'm just going to start doing that now so you can see I'm just right click adding columns and I'm going to change these this is going to now be SC RPE so it's going to refer to strength conditioning SC time and then SC training load and I think that actually has an extra space in it I'm not going to need this session column anymore because we're going to actually have a column or we're actually going to have a column for SC and a column for practice. I'm just gonna delete this and then I'll copy these three and I'm gonna paste them. And now instead of SCRPE2, I want PRAC RPE and that's gonna signify practice. And then I'll do PRAC time and then PRAC TL for training load. And then I'm gonna have one final for just training load and that is gonna be where I sum those values. Now the first thing I wanna do is just create a bunch of dummy data and we're going to use a function that we've used before and that is the rand between function so i'm just going to type equals rand between and then it's going to ask me for my bottom value which in this case will make one top value is going to be 10 and i'll close that off and it will add my rpe values in there then what i'm going to do is i'm going to do my times so i'm going to use the rand between function again equals rand between open that up top bottom value 15 minutes and then maybe 120 minutes for my top value. But when you when I've done this, you can see it's doing like 31 minutes, 83. I'm gonna round it to the nearest 15. So I'm gonna wrap this in an M round function. So I'll just type M round at the beginning, go to the end, comma, 15, because it's gonna ask me what multiple I want to round that to. And then when I hit enter, you can see now every value is rounded to the nearest 15 increment and so I'm just going to copy these and then I'll just paste right click paste the values so that they don't keep updating and now there's no formula it's just taking those numbers and then what I want to do is actually sum those or sorry multiply those to get my um, training load so I'm going to type equals product open that up and I need these two 
cells. And I'll close that off so you can see we have product, table RPE, and um, at practice RPE to practice time. Hit enter and it's going to take the multi or uh, multiply those by each other and give us our training loads. And then for training load, I wanna get the sum of practice and strength conditioning. So I'm gonna type equals sum practice and I'm gonna hold down control and I'll select two of them at the same time and then close that off and hit okay. And now we have all of our training load values. So you can see on day one, 1950, day two, 390, 915, 300, et cetera, all the way down. And that happened for both athlete one and athlete two. Now, because we're not gonna need our type anymore, I'm just going to delete this column here. And we're going to start to add in our new training load values. So I'm just gonna add a couple of columns in here and it's copied over some of the formatting. So I'll just get that rid of that. And I'm gonna make these the same size. A quick trick for that is if I just copy one of those cells and then select the two I want to paste it in, if I right click, go to paste special and go down to this one right here that says column width, it'll just change the width to match that cell. And we wanna do our SCTL and our PRAC and I'm just going to give these a color. So let's make SC blue and practice red. And I'll bold those just so they show up a little bit better. Okay, so those are going to be our two values. The first formula that we have to actually edit is this training load. We want this to now refer to all of the load. So if you remember this formula, we have a sum ifs formula and it's taking the sum of table RPE three, which is this table over here, for the SC training load variable, except for we just want it to refer to the training load. And when is it doing that? It's doing that if the date matches the dates that we've already pulled out, and if the athlete name matches the athlete name that we've selected. So if I hit enter, what you're gonna notice is it's actually going to take the training load sums. So we're gonna actually take this formula and just edit it a couple times. So I'm gonna copy this formula and then go over to my SC training load and paste that in there. And it's actually gonna be the exact same formula, but instead I'm gonna to refer to table RPE3 SC training load. And then when I hit enter, it's gonna pull all those out. Now you can see it's formatted them as dates because it's thinking that it's this cell here. So I'm just gonna select all of these and format them as general. And it's gonna bring them back to my training loads. And let's do this one more time. I'll copy this formula and I'll paste it under practice. And instead of SC training load, we want PRAC. Hit enter. And it's formatted those as dates too. So I'll just take those and make them general. So that was pretty easy, but I'll just go over um, this formula one more time with you. I'm just putting everything back to the way it was because the dates changed all the sizes. So I'll just go over this formula one more time. So what's this formula doing? The sum ifs function, it's gonna ask us for three things. One, the sum range. In this case, we want SC training load, and then it's gonna ask us for our criteria. So the range that we want for the criteria is the date, and then the date we want it to match, the date values that we've pulled for, or uh, pulled out, reminder that when we have a hashtag, it's referring to the whole spilled array. And then when the table RPE athlete name matches the athlete name that we've pulled out, reminder, we have the dollar signs in there so that that doesn't change. So now onto our graph, it's just gonna be a matter of now graphing these values. So what do we have graphed here? I'm gonna right click and go to select data. So we can turn off the actual training load variable because we don't need that one anymore. And what I'm going to do is actually add a variable and the series name is gonna be SC training load and the series values, I'm going to select that whole column and hit okay. And you can see over here under the horizontal, we're going to need to select the dates as well. So I'll hit okay there. And while I'm here, I'm going to add the other variable as well. So we'll add the practice training load variables hit okay and then we will add the dates in 
for that as well. And when I hit OK, nothing happens. So the reason this is is because our formula um, or sorry, our graph formatting is a little bit funky right now. So if I right click and go to change chart type, we can go down to our actual variables and you can see they're being plotted on a secondary axis. So let's turn them on so that they're gonna be plotted on our normal axis. And then I'm gonna actually change these to be a stacked graph. And then when I hit okay, you can see now that they are back sort of in the middle and we have our, our set SC training load and our practice. So I'm gonna just change these around a little bit. So if I kind of double click and go over to my color icons, I'm gonna make it blue to match what we pulled out. So I'll give it that blue color and I'm just gonna turn the transparency up to about 50 because that just helps it show up a little bit better. And then we'll do the same thing for the other one. Turn the transparency up to 50. And actually this blue color looks a bit funky. No, nope, that's the one I want, okay. And then the other thing on our graph that looks a little weird is this here. You can see that our acute chronic workload ratios are a little bit out of whack. And that's only because um, some of these training loads don't really make a lot of sense. So if we just edit some of these variables, like we probably wouldn't have um, a session that's 10 for 105 minutes. So maybe we make that kind of um, a five. And then we have a couple other wonky ones down here. Yeah, nine for 120. Maybe, maybe we'll make that a six, um, a 10. Maybe we'll make that a seven and another 10. Maybe we'll make that a five. Where are some of our wonky variables? Yeah, we got we just have some huge spikes in our acute chronic. So what I could do here easily is just change the scale here to make this go up to three. <clears throat> and then it just sort of makes everything show up. Oh, we get up to a 3.4. Wow, that is not great training loads. This is not the way you would wanna train your athletes. So let's just make that four so we can see all the kind of areas on our chart. So that's really how you would start to double up the different um, training stimuli. And if you wanted, we could add another one in here. We could do an other, we could do kind of whatever we wanted. And because of the way we've built this, it's all dynamic. So that if I actually switch my athletes and switch the, um, the rolling average days, it will all switch. Then the last thing that I wanna do is just kind of format this chart because there's a lot of things going on on this chart and it looks a little funky. So what I found is when I use sort of a darker background on the chart, it helps everything just show up that much better. So you can see right away that sort of cleaned everything up and makes it easier to see, except for it's just changed our high value and we want this to probably be red. So there's now our chart and it looks like the low and the high value are really popping and all of the other variables are kind of easy to see. And just as an example of what that looks like for the athletes when we change it, you can see that it looks really good. So, I mean, that was just a quick video on how to update the training load spreadsheet so that you could see um, strength conditioning and practice on the same graph. I hope this video helps you out. And if it does, please like and share the video. That really helps me out. And if you wanna see anything in a future video, please comment down below and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.